Hi all, my name is Davis and welcome to my channel where we talk about all things tech. And today we are talking about something that's super unusual. So we should all be familiar with the 88499 phones by now, as I think I've covered every single one of them on my channel over the past few years. But if you've somehow missed all of them, well, they are a series of really tough phones by Unihertz and they live up to their name because they've got some of the most ridiculous specifications in the world. Let me remind ourselves of the previous one that I covered, the Tank 3 Pro. This phone not only weighed as much as a tank, weighing almost 700 grams in weight, that is over one and a half pounds for you Americans, but it was almost three centimeters or well over an inch in thickness. That's six times thicker than the new iPad Pro. While that does sound ridiculous, it wasn't nearly as ridiculous as what they managed to hide inside because it had a completely ludicrous 23,800 milliamp battery that charged at an equally ridiculous 120 watts. But it also had things like a night vision camera, an insane 1200 lumen camp light, it had police lights, and most of all, the signature pro tank phone feature, the projector. Yep, while we had seen projectors on phones before, this was the first one that I had ever used that had a projector that you would actually want to use. It was 100 lumens in brightness and it was somehow actively cooled as well, despite being completely water resistant. And with this, you basically could have a 100 inch display with you wherever you went. And because you had the massive battery, you could also enjoy content for hours and hours on end. I think it was close to 12 hours of battery life with the projector. I honestly love the tank phone so much because they are just so much fun and they always get a really good reception when you show people them for the first time. But after the launch of the Tank 3 Pro, you would think that the Tank 4 Pro comes naturally next, right? Well, no, because in my hand I've got the brand new Tank 2 Pro. Confused? Well, so was I. And this video is brought to you by the Meta Ray-Ban Glasses, a smart wearable that has completely changed my life. If you are looking for a smart piece of tech that doesn't look like a smart piece of tech, then these are perfect for you. Because not only are these fantastic sunglasses, but they also have an amazing camera. It's sort of like having a GoPro with you everywhere you go. So it can capture memories like your exotic car spotting skills or your front row seats at a concert without having to take your phone out. And these are also fantastic headphones. So if you work in an office job and want to listen to music or podcasts without people knowing, then these work fantastically. And that's from first-hand experience as well. I have raved about these so much. I met at Ashley Notice and now they are sponsoring my channel. So if you would like to check them out, I have an affiliate link in the description and in the comments and if you buy one that would really help me out as well. So the Tank 2 Pro, what exactly is it? Well I feel like that they made the naming far more confusing than it should have been. They should have named it Tank 3 Pro Lite or something like that because this shares more with the Tank 3 Pro than it did with the old Tank 2 model. Essentially the idea was to give people a more affordable option if they want the upgraded projector of the Tank 3 Pro and the body style of the Tank 3 phones but don't necessarily necessarily want to pay for some of the other features. So I'm going to base this review slash comparison with the current prices that are listed on 8849's AliExpress store. The Take 3 Pro currently is listed at 572 American dollars, which is an amazing deal by the way. And the Tank 2 Pro is only $364. So that's basically budget phone money for literally a lot of phone. So let's take a look at the differences. So on the surface, these phones look very similar. They have what looks like an identical full HD IPS 6.79 inch 120 hertz display. And while they are fine displays, they just aren't particularly impressive. They both top up at just under 600 nits in brightness and it really could be better, especially for a a tough phone where you, you are expected to take them outside. The Tank 2 Pro on my unit at least is far better calibrated than the Tank 3 Pro as the Tank 3 always looked like it had a bit of a bluish display to me. And both of these have punch hole front facing cameras. On the Tank 3 Pro it's a 50 megapixel unit and on the Tank 2 Pro it's a 32 megapixel unit. And what is surprising as well is that while the Tank 3 Pro is 8 grams heavier than the Tank 2 Pro, the Tank 2 is marginally thicker by an entire millimeter. 
but um, yeah, essentially they do look identical. So on the top, we do have the same projector and you can also see the active cooling, which I've been told does not affect the IP68 water resistance. We also have the same manual focus wheel over here. We've also got the same buttons on the same side, including two different action buttons. And we've also got a SIM card slot here, which is a double SIM plus expandable SD storage. On the other side, we have a fingerprint reader slash power button and on the bottom, unfortunately, we still have the same mildly annoying flap for the USB-C port and luckily the headphone jack remains. Um, I do have to say that the build quality on both devices feels absolutely amazing. The combination of rubber, metal and glass really is first class and I can't believe that you can get this level of build quality, especially at this price of the Tank 2 Pro. It's insane. Things do look a little bit different on the back, however. Firstly, let's take a look at the camera module. Uh, while the Tank 3 Pro had a 200 megapixel main camera, a 50 megapixel wide angle camera, and also an eight megapixel telephoto camera, the Tank 2 Pro keeps only the main camera, although it's only a 100 megapixel unit now, and also the eight megapixel telephoto camera. However, both do have the same 64 megapixel night vision camera. The main difference on the back, however, are the camp lights. Because the Tank 2 Pro brings back the dual camp lights from the original Tank 2 instead of taking the single units from the Tank 3 model. And on the bottom here, we've got the same super loud mono loudspeaker. I believe that it goes up to 105 decibels, which is insane. Uh, but at the same time, I would love to see a front facing stereo pair on future models. But uh, yeah, this speaker is by far the loudest of any phone I've ever tested. Okay, so the exterior of the phone is basically the same. So where have the costs been cut? Unfortunately, it is with the chipset because where the Tank 3 Pro had a very decent MediaTek Dimensity 8200 chip, which had 5G and was also paired with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which meant they performed like a flagship phone. Unfortunately, the Tank 2 Pro doesn't. It's saddled with the same ancient MediaTek Helio G99 processor, which I think is the same as the original Tank phone. I mean, it isn't awful, but it only supports 4G, which is close to unacceptable in 2024. It doesn't support 4K recording, which is close to unacceptable as well. And it only has eight gigabytes of RAM. If we take a look at the synthetic benchmark Geekbench 6, where the Tank 3 Pro achieved a very decent single core score of 1231, the Tank 2, on the other hand, only scored half at 711. And multi-core score was even worse at 1231 instead of 3855. Now, I'm not saying that the Tank 2 is terribly slow because it isn't. It's got a 120 hertz screen and it feels decently brisk most of the time. But you do see a lot of hangups, drop frames and stutters while you are using the phone and the gaming performance is nowhere near as good as the Tank 3 Pro either. I usually wouldn't complain about the performance of a phone that offers this much at this price. But with a Tank phone, the whole point of it, in my mind, is sheer excess. It is the phone with no compromise, where you push every single spec to the limit. And that's what you get with the Tank 3 Pro, because it feels like a phone that can literally do anything. To pair most of these features with a very old processor on the Tank 2 Pro just doesn't really sit right with me. But at least it is paired with Android 14 instead of 13, of the older phone. And to be fair, they do seem to be almost identical, so you aren't missing out on much with Android 13. But please be aware before buying that tank phones don't generally get Android updates. So what you see is what you get forever. So yeah, be aware of that. Okay, so the Tank 2 Pro isn't the fastest phone in the world, but can it do the other tank phone stuff? Well, the camp light is still very cool. I've actually used this as a filming light on multiple occasions, so it genuinely is very useful. You can sort of see how bright it is. But what is somewhat less useful are the warning lights, but it is better than the Tank 3 on this front. Because while we do have our usual red and blue, now we've also got green. I've used this as a disco light on multiple occasions, and it's kind of cool. But at the same time, I don't see the ability to make these lights not flash unlike on the older phone. So that is a little bit of a weird downgrade. 
The night vision camera is just as good and useful as it was on the previous phone. Uh, this could be very good for people who work with wild animals. And we've also got the same insane battery life. With 23,800 milliamps of battery, depending on your usage, you can easily get between three to five days of battery. It really is quite insane. And there is reverse charging too, but it is rather slow. And now let's take a look at the main event, the projector. So this seems to be the same projector as the Tank 3 Pro and it is very good. Well, it is only 480p in resolution, it is a lot sharper than some other small pocket size projectors that I've seen. So that's really not a concern in this class. And while it's not super, super bright at 100 lumens, it is bright enough to actually make it useful even when it isn't super dark. You can realistically get up to a 100 inch size screen from this and it's just so much fun to use. You can use it for games, watching Netflix, YouTube, anything really. And while the fan does get quite audibly loud, I would far rather have this than have a very dim projector. I feel like that this is the main selling point of this phone. If you're using this phone as a portable projector rather as an actual day-to-day -day phone, I think for this price, it really is quite tempting, um, especially when paired with a super loud speaker, then the Tank 2 Pro really is quite tempting as an entertainment device when you go camping or something. And finally, let's get to the cameras. And as you might expect, they're not very good. While the Tank 3 cameras were fairly decent, if not amazing, I believe that this is the older main camera for the, from the original Tank 2. And while the images are okay, the dynamic range is poor, and the over-sharpening is rather extreme. Uh, this is at least fairly fast though. The telephoto camera as well is pretty disappointing. It's a 3.4 times zoom when compared to the main camera, and it's pretty soft and over-sharpened at the same time. Uh, the front-facing camera is sharper on the Tank 2, uh, but the worst bit though is the video. It's limited to 2K, which as I mentioned already, is pretty disappointing in 2024. And the dynamic range is poor, stabilization is poor, and the exposure changes are clunky. So definitely don't get this phone for the camera. If the cameras are important to you, definitely get the Tank 3 Pro, uh, because it is far, far better in this regard. So in conclusion, if you are getting a Tank phone, is the Tank 2 Pro the one to get? No. I believe that for just $200 more, the Tank 3 Pro is a far better expression of what a Tank phone is. A Tank phone should be a phone where the designers just say yes to everything. Every single specification, every feature that you could possibly imagine should be included. And the Tank 2 Pro just isn't that. It feels far too compromised due to the older chipset. But as I said before, if you are not buying the Tank phone to be a phone, rather you just want it to use it as a projector with easy access to all your favorite streaming services, then yes, this is a fantastic buy. And I think that you would absolutely love it. Uh, but for people like me, Tank 3 Pro is the one. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe. Comment down below if you've got any questions. Um, there's a link in the bio if you want to check the phone out. And until my Tank 3S review that's coming next week, um, I hope you are having a great day and toodaloo.